the empire prowls the borderlands with striking force. Arrogance astonishing. From the Northlands of Lebanon, among its forests of imperial cedars, the enemy readies to lunge. And below, innocents tremble. No, this is not about contemporary events. Though if you hear echoes, well, may the spirit speak to us as we hear. This is God's word from the prophet Isaiah, reading in the 11th chapter. God opened this word to us today and tell us what you want us to hear so that we may live and be your people for the sake of all. Amen. Listen. Look. The Lord God of the heavenly forces is chopping off the branches with a crash. The highest ones are about to be cut down and the exalted ones laid low. He will strike down the forest thickets with an axe and the mighty trees of Lebanon will fall. A shoot will grow out from Jesse's stump. A branch will sprout from his roots. God's spirit will rest on him. A spirit of wisdom and understanding. A spirit of planning and strength. A spirit of knowledge and awe of God. He will delight in awe of God. He will not exercise authority by what he sees, nor decide by what he hears. He will exercise authority with faithfulness for the poor and decide with rightness for those who suffer in the land. He will strike the land with the mace from his mouth, and by the breath of his lips, he will kill the wicked. Faithfulness will be the belt around his hips, and truthfulness the belt around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion will feed together. And a little boy will drive the flock. The cow and bear will graze. Their calves and cubs will lie down together. A lion will eat straw <coughs> like an ox. A baby will play over the cobra's hole. Toddlers will reach over the snake's den. No more will they harm or devastate on my sacred mountain. The land will surely be filled with the knowledge of God, just as water covers the sea. On that day, Jesse's root will stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations will seek him out, and where he lives will be full of splendor. This is God's word through God's servant Isaiah. 
the promise of Israel. God's word, but it's, it's all a dream, right? I, I, I mean, you know, the world these days, it, it was no less a dream back then when Isaiah promised this. You got to see that God's people were done for. The royal line through David, Jesse's son, had rotted out from the inside and was ready to crash down. And an all-powerful superpower was poised to strike. But then the prophet gave this promise, something new. In the fallen, burnt over, trashed, desolation, life. Where all had been banished, a new tree grows. Like before, but different. Decisively different. This king for God's people is, is blanketed with God's spirit. And so he rules well. With all the qualities needed for good government. Now, if you hear the phrase good government and want to yawn, just think. What is it like without good government? His rule is the wisdom of God. The poor, his number one priority. Relieving suffering, his agenda. And the result, the kingdom of peace in a world craving it. This tiny, fragile sprout of green, this child leading, the tree of life. We are his. And because we belong to Jesus, we are a tree of his life. Well, today I'm finishing up my look at trees. I've been doing it the past um, couple months, really. The Bible itself uses trees to tell the story of God. So I'm learning from prophets and arborists. And I've been wondering what trees can teach us about being congregations, trees of life these days. So, so let's review. Imagine we are a tree, us together, a tree of Jesus' life. Picture the three main parts of a tree. Roots, trunk and branches, leaves and fruit. I've used roots to talk about our life with God. Trunk and branches for our life together. And leaves and fruit for our life for the world. You could think of Jesus's love commands. He tells us to love God with all that we are, to love one another within the community of his disciples, and to love our neighbor. And Jesus grows our idea of neighbor to include anyone who's in need. 
I'm also thinking neighbor includes all creatures, great and small. The all my relations idea in many indigenous philosophies. And Jesus also says, love our enemies. Love is not so much a, a feeling. The feelings, you know, they come and go. Love is a commitment. Love is expressed in action. For God, for neighbors, enemies, all creation, for one another. And when this love happens, we catch a glimpse of that peaceable kingdom Isaiah described. And here and now we experience peace because we are with Jesus. We abide or live in Christ. We are the body of Christ. We are on mission with Christ. I've also been thinking about practices that can help us tend to our tree. And so we, we tend to our roots through things like daily prayer and weekly worship. We tend to our trunk and branches by sharing life together, sharing joys and sorrows, and by practices of forgiveness and repentance that lead to reconciliation. We learn that with each other, so then we can learn and share that, those practices with the world. And we strengthen our leaves and fruit individually as we scatter to serve others in our many neighborhoods and together as congregations with an anchor cause. That's something which a congregation commits itself its focus, its energies and resources too, because we can't do everything. But is there an anchor cause, a need that we can commit to doing well? So that's a review of where I've been taking us. As I wrap this up, I, I realize some more things. Um, it's helpful to think of these different parts of the tree separately, as I've been doing, but always remember, a tree is a tree. It's a single organism. And so the whole tree must be healthy. Well, the same with a congregation. Now, we each have our own interests and are drawn to different things. Many of us are drawn, for instance, to, to outreach the leaves and fruit stuff. Others drawn to relationships, trunk and branches. And others to spirituality, our, our roots. These all need our care and attention though, because we are one tree. And even if I'm drawn to one area, I need to see the value in those who are drawn to others because I need them to do that. I've been thinking in different traditions uh, in Christianity, there are different strengths. Um, here's some of my observations about our own. Um, United Church congregations, we love focusing on trunk and branches stuff our community together. And, and we are passionate about our leaves and fruit. Um, as someone like Bill Phipps, he, he led us in this, uh, serving those in need and acting for justice in the world. I don't think in United Church congregations uh, that we're so good at our roots, our life with God. I think our roots have been weak. 
for, for a long time and, and they need special attention. But even if we focus on areas where we are particularly weak, maybe, we still need to tend to our whole tree. It all needs our attention and care and mending, especially now, because this pandemic has weakened our whole tree and it's exposed some unhealth that was probably already there. So, so that's one thought. We, we need to think in terms of a system, the whole tree together. Here's another thought. I've mentioned Suzanne Simard before. Um, she's a botanist in British Columbia who's exploded our understanding of how trees connect within a forest. If you read the United Church's Broadview magazine, last month had a story about trees uh, and it included her. Here's a brief video about some of her discoveries. Trees may look like solitary individuals, but the ground beneath our feet tells a different story. Trees are secretly talking, trading, and waging war on one another. They do this using a network of fungi that grow around and inside their roots. The fungi provide the trees with nutrients, and in return they receive sugars. But scientists have found this connection runs far deeper than first thought. By plugging into the fungal network, trees can share resources with each other. The system has been nicknamed the Wood Wide Web. It's thought that older trees, fondly known as mother trees, use this fungal network to supply shaded seedlings with sugars, giving them a better chance of survival. Those trees that are sick or dying may dump their resources into the network, which might then be used by healthier neighbours. Plants also use fungi to send messages to one another. If they're attacked, they can release chemical signals through their roots, which can warn their neighbours to raise their defences. But like our internet, the wood wide web has its dark side too. Some orchids hack the system to steal resources from nearby trees. And other species, like the black walnut, spread toxic chemicals through the network to sabotage their rivals. Arboreal cybercrime aside, scientists are still debating why plants seem to behave in such an altruistic way. The hidden network creates a thriving community between individuals. When you're next in woodland, you might like to think of trees as part of a big super organism, chatting and swapping information and food under your feet. We are a tree of life, but we're not the only tree in a forest. And think of what Jeff talked about. Uh, these amalgamation conversations. Uh, Bethany, Alora, we're already connected by being part of the same pastoral charge, sharing the same, many of the same staff and other things. We're also connected with Alma through being part of the United Church of Canada together. We're connected because of our near, nearness to each other. Our, our paths often cross. We're connected in our area uh, with other trees, other congregations in different traditions, Presbyterian, Anglican, Roman Catholic, Baptist, Pentecostal, and so on. We're already connected in networks of caring and support. And I hope, <laughs> not waging much war on each other. Hmm. Most important, we share in one Jesus and we are filled with one Holy Spirit. So I think these amalgamation conversations are good. If we can join our different strengths and share one another's weaknesses, if we can see a common vision and hope for a new life together, then I think our abiding in Christ roots 
and our body of Christ, trunk and branches, and our mission with Christ, leaves and fruit, will be stronger and richer and healthier. Now, if this new tree grows, our, our tendency will be to focus on our, our branches and trunk. Of course, we need to bring three communities, three congregations together into one. And that takes careful tending. I think, knowing us, we'll also pay attention to our leaves and fruit. How can this new thing bless those around us? What is our mission with Christ in our many neighborhoods? Might we have an anchor cause? What could that be? This is important stuff. But we can't forget our roots. Remember, the network in the forest happens through the roots. And we have such rich roots to draw on. Our roots are our life. Roots anchor the tree against storms. And roots nourish the tree. Frankly, we are only a tree that gives life. If we are deeply connected with Jesus, the tree of life. He's maybe a bit like that mother tree that Suzanne Samard talks about. who protects and gives to the trees around her. We will only have life together as a community, belonging together if together we belong to him. We will only bless our world if we go with him. We will only live if we live in him. Jesus, a small, unexpected sprout who brings the peaceable kingdom. He's saying to you, to me, to us together, come with me and share in that peaceable kingdom and share it for others too. Thanks be to God. Amen.